guys welcome back so in this video we're going to take a look at how we can use volumes in Houdini to do some 3d modeling um, this is uh, we're going to be using the uh, open VDB tools okay now open VDB is a an open source set of tools and uh, instructions uh, created by the scientists and the experts at DreamWorks um, and it's an Academy Award winning format Okay, so there's a lot of interesting re uh, research and development gone into this. It's been used in a ton of feature films and is something that's continually being developed as, as a tool. So Houdini incorporates the, the VDB tools. Okay, so if we just press tab and type VDB, okay, we've got access to the entire tool set of, of OpenVDB, which is, you know, an on, like I said, an ongoing project to, to create... Uh, a way to work with volumes whether you're doing pyro whether you're doing fluids or in our case whether you're doing some kinds of procedural modeling we've got lots and lots of tools that we can use here to to manipulate uh, volumes okay so we're moving away from pixels uh, sorry we're moving away from polygons and moving more towards uh, voxels which are volume pixels okay so what we want to do we want to convert our existing polygons, what we're looking at right now, into uh, a, a grid of voxels. Okay, and we can do that with a VDB from Polygons node. Okay, so I'm just going to place one of those down, and I'm going to make the connection here. All right, put the display flag on. Okay. And what you'll notice is you've got like a quite a, a crunchy looking uh, object in your scene. All right. So not nothing. Don't worry too much if it looks a bit janky at the moment. What we're going to do is we're going to work with it in this low resolution state. And then once we're ready, we can uh, we can reduce the voxel size to give us uh, huge amounts of detail uh, when once we're ready. Um, but ultimately, the voxel size here is what we're looking at. We're looking at quite a big voxel size. So the example I always go to is imagine uh, a Minecraft world um, and say point one is the size of the blocks in your Minecraft world. Uh, if you steadily reduce the size of those blocks, you'd have a much more high resolution Minecraft world. So that's ultimately what we're looking at here with the voxels, okay? So if we take this voxel size and we half it, so we go from 0.1 to 0 0.5, okay? You can see that has given us a bit more definition on our shape, okay? If we half that again, even further, so we'll say 0 0.025, you can see we're starting to get a really close approximation of our underlying polygons, all right? And this is the workflow that we're going to be uh, adopting. We're going to take advantage of the way that these voxels work and we can apply noises to them and we can um, set their density because currently what we're seeing is a, a, a density field here. So within this bounding box, the, the, the visible voxels have a set density, okay? And ultimately, voxels external to that have zero density, okay? So when we run noise across them, we'll be using this density attribute, okay? And manipulating it. So there's a couple of things I want to just change on the VDB from Polygon's node, just to make our life a little bit easier. Um, as we'll see, we can name this this uh, density field. We can name this volume field here, and it's currently named surface. I'm just going to change this to density, and you'll see why uh, in a second. But I'm just going to call that density, and you'll see nothing changes because all we've done is we've just renamed this volume here. Uh, but you'll see why that name will um, will come will become apparent in a second. Secondly, what I want to do is um, I want to fill the interior, okay? So that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, that will just add voxels all the way through this surface shape. Uh, so obviously when we're applying noises and things like that, we don't want any holes to appear in our in our geometry um, or in our voxels, sorry. Um, so we'll click fill interior. 
And then for the exterior voxels, that is these almost like this bounding box area here. We can set that to be a specific number, okay? Or we can use world space, all right? So now we can sort of set how much exterior voxels uh, we need. This is just a matter of efficiency. We wouldn't want to go crazy like that because we're just doing additional processing that we don't need to do. So just get it sort of tight and if you see any clipping issues you can always bump that up a little bit but that's that's usually a good starting point okay and from here what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop this back to something at like 0.5 and I realize it looks really janky at the moment but as you'll see some of the operations that we're about to perform on this are a bit um, can be a bit processor intensive so it's always good just to get the rough shapes outlined and then when you're ready uh, reduce the voxel size to get the resolution that you want. So it'll all make sense in, in a few seconds. Okay, so once we've got our initial voxel set up, we're going to drop into a volume VOP. Okay, so type volume VOP. And I'm sure you guys are, are uh, familiar with VOPs now, so we, we tend to work with VOPs for doing certain operations with points or point data. We use VOP networks to build shaders. This should be, you know, becoming sort of part of your working uh, in, in Houdini, understanding the workflow of, of VOP networks. So this VOP network is specifically for volumes. Okay, so we've got some globals here. So we've got a position and density. If you look, that's why we changed the name because we want to manipulate this value directly. So we, we named our surface to be density. So currently the density is coming in and then going straight back out again. Uh, so in between these two nodes is where we are going to manipulate our, our volume pixels, all right? So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is we want to add some noise. Yeah, sounds pretty, yeah, pretty straightforward. And th this whole process of creating these is just going to be a matter of layering noise upon noise upon noise upon noise all right so there's nothing you know there's no sculpting or there's no uv mapping or anything like that we're just going to rely on layering up noises and the different noise algorithms that you know you guys should be familiar with by now so let's put down a uh, unified noise static this is like a giant master noise contains all the different types and has got lots of useful parameters that we can use. So I'm going to put one of those down just as a starting point. Okay, and then I'm going to grab my position and plug that into the position in the noise. So this is going to look at the position of the voxel. So remember these volume VOPs or any VOP really operates like a for loop. So it's going to loop through every single volume pixel here it's going to look at its position and that's where it's going to generate this noise based on that okay so the next thing we want to do is take the output of our noise okay and we want to add it to our density all right so if we could just make those connections there and then re-plug in okay all right so it's vanished okay so probably what is happening is our noise is a little bit too um a little bit too wild the values have kind of exploded out our voxels into space so we need to sort of control this uh noise pattern a little bit we need to clamp the values of this of this noise here so we need to have a little bit more control with how we um how we clamp these values and the way that I would do it would be with a fit range uh, unclamp tends to work pretty well so we'll put down a fit range we'll plug in to the input and then we'll make that connection there as well so we've got the noise going into a, uh, a fit range and then it adds to the density and outputs okay so with this we can just clamp those noise values a little bit and we'll start to see our noise coming our our surface coming back okay a couple of things I want you to notice is um, once we reach the bounds of our volume we start to you know it starts to clamp itself so just be aware of that um, 
So what we can do is just get something, some noisy shapes going. And if you, if you're having sort of issues with your with your computer being really slow, what you can do is just increase this value here on the VDB from Polygon's node. Okay, so that's the base setup. What we're going to do in the next video is we're, we're going to sort of start refining this system so we can start generating some interesting noisy shapes and start referring back to our reference to, to get the look that we're going for. Okay, uh, so I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.